Welcome back. This interview is with the one and only Shane Connolly, um, most famous for doing um, two royal weddings um, and is a champion of uh, sustainability and forestry. Um, just absolutely fantastic to speak to him and so, so honoured to have the time to talk to him. So I hope you really enjoy this interview because I loved talking to him and he is just fascinating. Um, thanks so much, Shane. So tell me, how did you get in? So I've had a lot of people asking questions. Um, how did you get into this crazy flower world? Well, I got into it but really because I loved gardens and I loved gardening. And when I was a child, I was a very odd, nerdy child who, who liked gardens and liked gardening. And uh, friends, during, I, so I went to university and read a degree in psychology. And when oh, I was halfway through that, I was in England for a few months. Yeah, if you have any problems, let's talk about them. No, I was <laughs> I in England for a few months, and the, the, I was introduced to these people because friends of the family said, you must come and meet them. They've got a beautiful garden. And they, they did indeed have a beautiful garden, but they did flowers. That was their, they did flowers. They had event florists, you would call it nowadays, I suppose. Right. And in those days, they called themselves floral decorators. And they... I just was fascinated. I said, like, this is incredible. You know, they use all these beautiful garden flowers to make incredible displays. Michael Goulding and Elizabeth Barker were the, the couple and they let me help them carry buckets and clean buckets out and hold ladders, not do any flowers. And after about a year, I thought, this is what I want to do. Um, I think this is, you know, this is, I would be so good at this. I thought I would be so good at this as you do. And <laughs> They said, well, you're going to have to have a full-time job because they had a studio and they got me a job with Paul Brook and Gould. And so I, 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 yeah, I went to Paul Brook and Gould for two years, age 23. So that was a quite a hard adjustment because I came out of university and I went to a place where they were used to the real uh, apprenticeship schemes where girls came, right. mostly girls came age 16 after school and did what they were told. And suddenly they had this bullshit 23 year old only because I was tall. I mean, they were very glad to get a tall person because that was very <laughs> useful in floristry. Um, and and I, I stuck about, they stuck me out and I stuck them out. And then I left and I started to work freelance for some people and started my, you know, did as most people do who start their own business, you know, there isn't enough work. You work as a freelancer, you feel exhausted because you stay up all night to try to make something work of your own job and then you work all day for somebody else the next day but you you live and that was it and that, I mean I don't even know some people say did you have a business plan I didn't I didn't even have a day-to-day -day plan <laughs> I just ended up having my own business and that's it you know it's happened <laughs> Crazy. yeah so that's how I got into flowers yeah gardens it's it is it is gardens Garden got me into flowers and I've, I've never not seen that connection so when people say what's the name of that flower I think for goodness sake you should know the name of that or you know they don't understand what's in season you think yeah. look in a garden you don't have to own a garden to look in one you're saying you walk along the street you see things in bloom you know you discover that lupins have a smell you discover yeah. that peonies uh, don't grow very high you think peonies are very tall things they're not really and um, the ones we get anyway cut. No, mine are all on the so, you know, it's very interesting. <laughs> after the rain. <laughs> yeah, everything's on the floor after that rain earlier. No. Including me. So that's how I got into flowers. Amazing. Amazing. So tell me about your kind of um day-to-day -day life at the moment. Obviously, like now we're in a different time because we're in lockdown, but um your kind of general week, how would it how would you know, I'm sure it isn't a general week, but how, how does your week normally pan out? I mean, it's never a general week. I think Mondays are always uh, the day that's the most regular for probably all of us, because very few events happen on a Monday, in my experience, 32 years. Most events don't. And Mondays are the day when things come to the studio, either from Covent Garden Flower Market or from private growers for things that are happening that week. So it's, I think it's sort of a day, it's like going shopping that day. It's the shopping day. We right. also do flowers in a few people's houses. Um, and so that would happen on a Monday, but 
the team makes you do that. Now that I'm very ancient, I don't have to do everything <laughs> on my own. And so that was Monday is Monday is Monday is a, a sort of an admin type day. I always think it's a really tiring day in Monday. Um, yeah. It, yeah, tiring as <laughs> Mondays are. And then the rest of the week can be anything. You know, I think I go to more normally before lockdown. I go to more meetings than I would perhaps like. I would love to be in the studio doing things with flowers more, but instead I end up going to meetings. Um, and I suppose that's what brings the work in and that's what, in a way, that's where the creativity starts actually. Yeah. Uh, and then the rest of the week just blurs along and suddenly you think, oh my goodness, it's Saturday, how did that happen? Yeah, it's very odd. So lockdown has been a revelation. Since, since I was 23, I've never had more than two weeks off. So suddenly I've had three months off. It's been very strange, very strange. Hmm. Yeah, it is the whole, I think it's, it's easy to get in as a florist, you get into that cycle, don't you? Of, of your week goes and then Saturday comes, yeah. Sunday you either collect from a, an event yeah. or you fall down to sleep and try and see your family and then, yeah, back yeah. in again. It's amazing. Yeah. Do you think you'll do you think it's you'll... quite relentless i think are you back yeah. we're back i am I'm, well i think i am yeah. <laughs> i think i'm alive i think i'm here in body in mind I'm here. i don't know about the mind <laughs> <The body's here. laughs> um how do you do you think going forward what changes you'll make in terms of um life changes like lockdown you don't have to answer that obviously but i think we're all reassessing our event world won't be as we know it for a while i mean maybe for years yeah and i think that there won't be a lot of money around so events might not be as as generous as they've been in the past you know i think it'll be very hard private individuals and corporate things they just won't have that sort of money and when they do have an event they might not want it to look like they are spending loads of money yeah that's so it'll be very, it's a very interesting time what I hope is that it brings everyone back in the flower world to the real reason we have flowers and the real meaning of flowers. Um, I mean, that's what I hope, so that it doesn't, you know, that we, we can think of flowers as a, an intrinsic special thing, which has a message and which brings us back to nature and, and isn't, um, isn't a show off thing anymore. So that's what I hope, I, I hope very much. I think we've seen up here in, in Yorkshire, I think as well, um, that's starting to happen in terms of um, what's available. So like, you know, at that time when there wasn't a lot available, like the Yorkshire flowers and the flowers that growers are uh, around here, um, you know, it's like, if you want to order flowers from me, I'm getting them from a Yorkshire grower, you're getting what's in season and you're getting what I'm choosing for you. It's not, yeah. you know, yes. I want roses and I want this and I want this. It's like, you're having all these beautiful things that are in season that are now, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a, that's a very interesting thing, and and one that I've you know spoken about a lot with people over the years, not just in, since lockdown. It is the education of clients and the general public about their expectations. You know, they wouldn't go into a good restaurant and expect to get strawberries and and asparagus in December, and yet they think they can go to you know a, a reputable flower company and dictate what's in season when it isn't yeah and it, it's, it's a great shame i didn't it's, a, it's an interesting how to how to um educate clients and the general public it really needs somebody like jamie oliver who did it for food in a lot of ways and delia smith before him and and you know rick stein there have been so many people in the food industry and in the flower industry it hasn't quite happened yet it still has Sort of these glamorous programs that glamorize flowers and the, the use of great quantities and the use of everything that's gone for color and texture those two words you hear all the time yeah very rarely seasonality yeah that's such a good point i had this um, discussion with my son last night we we're watching um there's a program called race around the world i don't know if you've seen it and he's, he's nine no, I and they're watching it and i said i'll get you some um, some strawberries and, and bananas and ice cream I'm trying to you know put fruit in them yeah. and um, he said oh mommy I think I could eat strawberries every day for the rest of the year and I yeah. said they don't <laughs> taste as good in, in December Elliot why do you think that is I, you know I'm not going to give you them all year round yeah. because they taste so good now because yes. of this so it was quite interesting having that chat about food yeah. and then I think yeah. people are falling in love with um 
I've noticed as well, obviously peony is peony season. So I think hopefully we can educate people that way, like peony season is going to be over soon. And then yes. we're going to move into yes. like, you know, hydrangeas or sweet William or just general mixes yes. of beauty, yes. you know. Um, and hopefully that this time will be like that because people have made the effort to put them in their home. They've not just grabbed a bunch in the supermarket. Yeah, I think supermarkets could do an awful lot more um, to label and sort of say mm -hmm. British grown, here we are, and this is what's in season. You know, make more of a sort of selling campaign of it. I mean, I know they've got so many other worries and things going on, but it would just be, I have, we have a Tesco's beside us and, you know, I love it if I go in there, they sometimes will have British grown daffodils in the spring, obviously. Yeah. And I always buy a bunch, you know, 50p, one pound, and yeah. I buy that bunch because I think that's just, you know, I'm so, I want to encourage them to do this. Yeah. And then other places they'll just say flowers, you know, you go into some big smart department store, uh, supermarkets, and they just have piles of flowers. And it doesn't say where anything is from. It yeah. doesn't say what it's been sprayed with in the process of, of export or import. And if that was food, they couldn't really just spread willy nilly. Yeah, um, really, yeah, it's such a big, it's such a big And every, everything has country of origin on it. Everything, except flowers, nothing at all. And I would like to know if that bunch was grown in Colombia, uh, or if it was grown in Japan, or if it was grown in Kenya, or if it was grown in Holland, where was it grown? And I'd like to know what it was sprayed with when it left those countries, and if it was sprayed with anything when it came into Britain. And has it been put in anything to prolong the life? I just would like, you know, yeah, that yeah. transparency. More awareness. Yeah, more awareness. Yeah. I think that, that's yeah. it. I read a horrendous, a horrendous report, wasn't there, about a, a while ago about um, all the chemicals and what we're absorbing into our hands, you know, when we're using these. Um, yeah, it's quite scary, really, for the future generations. I think, or for us in however many years when we've absorbed all, all of that. I know, I know, because in a way, you know, 50 years ago, I think it was 90% of flowers were grown in the country of origin in Britain, for Britain. And I think 20 years ago, it was still quite a high, you know, it was much higher. At the moment, it's 10%. 10% mm. of flowers that are consumed are grown in Britain. Yeah. And that's a really bad score. I'm really hoping really that it's changing. I mean, the, the, obviously there's like the flowers from the farm and things um, yep. that are starting, you know, more artisan growers and people are kind of getting into that more. But I think yeah. um, hopefully, hopefully it will be something that people, you know, farmers diversifying, um, yep. you know, big yep. farms and will. And I think it, it's interesting that, 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 that if farmers and growers could sort of share their knowledge a bit so that they would, you know, no, I think one of the main problems with British grown flowers is the transport because what's grown in New Yorkshire will probably not get very much further than Yorkshire. Yeah. It won't get down to London for sure. Um, and I think the ex half the expense for the consumer is paying for the transport of things to get to them, unless you drive around, you know, the florist drives around and collects them. And I think that, that the convenience, I can see why people have a big lorry that comes from Holland and stops outside the shop at a civilised hour, not at four o'clock in the morning. Oh, I've done the and four o'clock. I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still do. And, you know, to walk into a van and just pick, I can imagine that must be very nice. I've never done it and I'm never going to do it, but I can see why people do do it. It must make you like... Um... I remember like watching, you know, I met you at um, Chapel Designers. That's the first, where, you know, where I saw you demonstrate with Holly in the in a lovely back, you know, beautiful place in, um, I can't think where it was. It was near the market, Vauxhall, wasn't it? Upstairs in a pub. Yeah, it was, it was a pub. It was a pub on the road, a pub I've never seen in my life. Uh, you know, you've driven that road all this time. And I drove it by four times trying to find the pub because yeah. Holly wasn't English. So she hadn't, uh, you know, I had an address, but I, I couldn't find it. And then there it was, a pub. That's right. Imagine all those people driving past and not knowing what was going on inside that pub. All these florists gathered from all around the world to watch you make this insanely big, beautiful urn. Oh, it was gorgeous. Really inappropriate for the second floor of a pub. I remember <laughs> that was the other thing. We had to carry everything up the stairs. I didn't, I didn't ask any of those questions in advance. <laughs> anyway, we got away with it. <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, I love um, you, your use of plants. And that to me, that just... It, I mean, I, it, yeah, I, cry, I'm, I cried. Um, sometimes well, everyone I, cries at Holly's shows. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I think it was just the kind of realisation of you can use plants. Like it's unpicking yeah. 
a lot of the things that people have been, you know, indoctrinated with in like traditional floristry colleges or whatever. It was like, yeah. you plant it last longer, you can plant it again. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you can. Amazing. Yeah. And it was just like, <sighs> I right. think, I mean, I've done that. Paul Brook and Gould used to do that. Michael Goulding, who started me off, used to do that. And I've always done it without really thinking the use of growing things and especially in big, big arrangements, you know, that you can put the, the one that was the sort of fail safe one is, is hydrangea plants yeah. because cut hydrangea a is quite expensive and B even the very best has got that tendency to go soft. Sometimes yeah. a big plant will give you six heads and it does all the in and out that you wanted to do. And you put it in an arrangement. You think, wow, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. It gives, you, it gives you a lot of buying for the buck. Absolutely. And then people are so happy that they can have them afterwards and take them and plant them. And yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so the tell me, I mean, really... you must have like, like, yeah, I mean, my, uh, I'm terrible with plants afterwards. So your garden must be amazing if you've come from that gardening background as well. But yeah, my, my I, haven't, I, I haven't had enough time in my garden. This, this is the nice thing about lockdown. The only nice thing has been I've had time, but still not enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's been lovely. <laughs> Um, so in your career can you tell me about a few kind of um, like highs that you've had and then any lows or any like mistakes that you think you know that you remember anything you've done that's crazy I remember one of the very first sort of very smart commissions I got in, in, a, in an editor of a magazine's house and I did what I thought was a very beautiful arrangement and the water leaked all over this 18th century table and I had to pay for the restoration. And I remember that was a real low because of course I hadn't charged enough anyway. I didn't have insurance, big lesson. That was in the very early days and it's, it's such a lesson. So many people do flowers and they haven't got the right insurance. As things go wrong, they've got nothing to fall back on. God forbid if it, something fell over and you know broke somebody's leg. Yeah. We had a really bad experience when somebody, an electrician in a tent came down a ladder and put their foot into a glass um, hurricane lamp and cut one of the main, I mean, I, luckily I wasn't there, I'm not very fond of blood, uh, <laughs> but really, really bad. Insurance takes care of that. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. we need insurance. So the lows have been learning those sorts of things, I suppose. Um, gosh, the highs, I mean, they've been, there's, I think sometimes I found it extraordinary to think, uh, you know, we did a wedding in India in 2013 and I remember standing there thinking yeah, is this really me is this really if someone had told me that when I was 17 growing up in Belfast in Northern Ireland I wouldn't have believed it for a second yeah. and there I was doing a wedding in India you know and and with just the loveliest clients ever and wonderful Indian florists helping and you know, it was, a, it was, of course it was hard work and of course it was so hot you wanted to die, but it was just this extraordinary achievement. This real, this real, um, you know, you, you really felt that, that you felt valued and appreciated and trusted. I think those are the things that give me the highs. When I feel trusted by a client, I'll do anything for them. Absolutely yeah. anything. Well, <laughs> anything legal. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, and it's, it's so, I was ch chatting to Holly Chapel actually, um, and we were saying that, and it's not taking those moments for granted and having those no. little moments where you stand there and you go, oh, this, like, this is, this is, this is real. Like, this is amazing. And like, just drinking it in, isn't it? And having time to do yeah. that is so special. It is. And sometimes you don't, you know, sometimes you finish and you're out of there and you, d you haven't had any time to, to actually look. And sometimes if you're, if you've got a team of 20 people, it isn't appropriate that you all stand and go. You want yeah. everybody to get up. Yeah, so yeah. That, you know, get out, professional. Get up. <laughs> yeah, get up. <laughs> and if that's an odd one. Um, so it's not, it's, you don't often have that time. And certainly in India, that was, um, you know, I always remember standing there and thinking, this is, this is unreal. This is, this is, um, you know, this is the stuff of, of well, dreams even. It yeah. doesn't do it justice. <laughs> it's just extraordinary. So what, what do you um so um you, obviously you've got your book as well your beautiful book how how five books i mean you, like your most recent book of like the meaning of flowers sorry you've sorry. Got <laughs> sorry i did have lots of your books downstairs as well I, I, my library is ridiculous five books yeah mine is um, too now it's mad isn't it how you just accumulate 
just beautiful books and whether they can be of like textiles or flowers or just yeah. inspiration from everywhere. Um, it, how it, does it, the, how, how, sorry. I was just going to say books used to be the only way that you saw anyone else's work into the flower world because before social media, you never saw it. You know, people would say, Ken Turner is the most amazing florist that's ever lived. I'd never seen his work until I saw his book. Yeah. And, you know, and then you think, wow, that's just extraordinary. So I books, books. I think I've been to bed with more something. florists, like books. <laughs> and then anything, yeah. you know, just sitting there in bed, just when I first started out, you know, I, I, I'm just, just absorbing it all, like you say, and looking and what's this flower and what's this? And I think yeah. it's people who are coming into the industry now, they're spoiled with all of the, all of the everything, aren't they? Yeah. And I think also social media in some ways, if you just follow florists, you're never going to learn anything about anything. You need to follow gardeners and cooks and fashion designers and, and just really get yourself out there. And nothing is the same as going to a, a, an actual exhibition or a performance, going to an opera oh, or a play. No, or not happening right now. It makes me so, so... I know. I know. When will that happen again? No, I think people might be like, I think art galleries for me is the, is the thing that I just, yeah. I can still stand in front of a painting and just be absolutely mesmerized. Yeah. And yeah. that'll be one of my favorite things to go back and do. Yeah. yeah. And it teaches you so much, you know, it teaches you about color so much when people say we want all red flowers and you look at a painting and look at the bit of a red dress and it's got about 15 different colors and some of them aren't even red, you know, and you think, that's what I need to do to make it look red. Yeah. And it's very, very, it's very important for, for anyone who wants to be a, a really good floral designer, florist, whatever you want to call yourself. Um, you, need to, you need to broaden your mind a lot. Really, really important. I love that. I love that. I think it's so true. I think it's, I, I grew up in a household with um, art teachers as parents. So we just had stuff everywhere all the time. <laughs> Colours and oh, books. wonderful. And, yeah, very lovely. Very lovely. Yeah. Um, but I think colour is something yeah. that people struggle with um, that, you know they don't know how to put colours together I think yeah. that, that's awesome advice it's really yeah to go and look at art and pictures and look at pictures and look up and look up clothes <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely so what have you got in in terms of like your career obviously um, I think a lot of people would know you for like the royal weddings you know that's pretty like up there, I would say, on like, you know, amazing things to have done in your life, tick. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what's like, like, what have you, what do you want to carry on to do? What do you, what's, what drives you now to kind like, of carry on? Gosh. Um, really, the thing that I feel is most important is to increase the awareness of sustainability in the flower industry. And I feel that's, you know, my mission, sadly, it doesn't pay you any money, but it is my mission. And I, I do feel passionate. And I feel that not enough people are realizing the connection between flowers and nature. And, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the things we do as florists, and I will include myself in it, a lot of the things are not sustainable. Mm. And a lot of the techniques that people use to arrange, you know, floral foam is this, is, is part of this whole thing. But an awful lot of it is just waste and floral foam's big problem of course is it's microplastics and chemicals in it and mm. the biodegrading inability of it but there are so many other things as well like the plastic that wraps up flowers the the plastic ribbon that gets put on things the the air miles of flowers that travel and the chemicals on those so i feel my mission is to spread knowledge about that i really think the easiest way to do that is to show people beauty. I think if people get shown ugliness, they don't look. Yeah. So you can do any amount of talking, but you have to really show that beauty can exist sustainably. And I think, I think, so that's what keeps me going. And also because I still, I really like the feel of flowers. I really like plants, plants, I think plants are the thing that really get me excited and just things that are growing and then trying to re you know, to bring those into a house and make them still feel like they aren't. My lovely friend, Emily Thompson, who's a florist in, in New York, she always says that gardeners are the doctors of the plant world. You know, they give them birth by seeds, they tend them, they keep them 
healthy, they know what to do. And florists are the undertakers. <laughs> the morticians, sort of after they've been cut, they make them look good for the short period after the death. Wow. Um, that is, that is yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's very interesting though. And that's why I really like to think of gardening as well. You know, that you're, when you've got growing things, they aren't on, they aren't on death's row just yet. And so it gives me great pleasure, like a plant in a big arrangement, to think that's never going to die. Yeah. Well, of course it won't die because people don't look after things, but it's got a chance. It's got a fighting chance. Yeah. And you get that energy yeah. hit from plants, don't you? That beautiful mm. energy yeah. hit. And yeah. soil. I think there is an extraordinary magic getting your hands on soil. Without question, I need to. We um we grow uh we grow well. My parents grow for me. So where where we're based in there, and there's a walled garden and things. And then um, so they've just planted 125 dahlia plants. So yeah, looking for. Although we had so the most beautiful dahlia last year. I cannot wait to see them again. They're like old friends returning. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what the seasons are. Yeah, you know, it's like a lovely old friend you haven't seen for a while. I mean, I have a mixed relationship with peonies. I'm always quite glad when peonies stop because there's something overwhelming about people's love of peonies and they want peonies and they want peonies. You think, oh, I can't bear another, I don't want to see another peony. So the drama queen, aren't they, for sure? Yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I think it's been, it's been different as well because I've been doing, um, I don't know if you've been doing, if you've been working during the um, this lockdown situation, but I've been doing like bouquets from home um, yeah. and it's very different like, flowers getting flowers in for a wedding obviously because they're more open rather than a bouquet they're going out closed aren't they it's a different yes. it's a completely different way Quite of offering different. yeah yeah, yeah. It's, been a very, it's been a very good time for all of us to restock and rethink and yeah it's been a good it's been a good have to be positive about such a negative time it's been a good opportunity i hope everyone's feeling positive as it comes to an end yeah, and I think yeah, I think it's making people realise what's important. Getting nature and flowers in your house has definitely been important for so many people. Just lifting, if you're in a room, like it just lifts the room. It brings it alive, doesn't it? No question. And yeah. and for me, I don't often bring flowers into the house because I'm too busy. Yeah. And you know, you just think, oh, I, I can't. I, I'm not going to bother, except for a little leftover or something. But what's been really nice is I've been taking things in from the garden including plants and having them in the house and really enjoying it yay so it's sort of yeah it is yay it's brought me back yeah yay. why did i do it in the first place you know, it's very, <laughs> very, nice. very nice so um, a random question that i'm asking on these interviews is um when you are in the workshop and you're like doing a big wedding and your hands are in flowers and you're tired and you just reach for something to eat what would be your like snack of choice what would that be I wish I could say something really healthy. <laughs> That's what um, everyone says. Nobody says cheese. 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 <laughs> cheese. One of my favourite things is a, a nice apple and a chunk of cheese and eat the two things, you know, bite of each. Yeah. I find that a really, if you're feeling hungry, that's a really, really nice thing. Um, sandwich sometimes. I mean, we, we eat terribly, we flower people, because quite often, the, you know, the, if you're doing a party that's out of time, and the, the, the person who's doing it, the person who's organised, said, so we'll do the food. It'll be sandwiches and crisps. That's yeah. what it will be. You know, it won't be anything else because some people don't like anything else. Yeah. It will never be a delicious salad with lovely little olives and homemade this and that. It won't be. It won't be. So it's very odd. It's very odd. I suppose that would be, I would say apple and cheese. That would be my, my snack of choice. That is a good answer. That is a good answer. I haven't had anything savoury yet, so that's good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then going forward, um, what what if, if you somebody was coming into the floristry industry now, um, what would you advise them to do? That's uh, a good question. What would I advise them to do? <laughs> well, because quite often people say, what 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 school or college would you advise me to go to? And that's a really hard question because, I mean, hating to generalise, but I think quite often the aim of a school or college is to give somebody the skills to do A, B, C, and D. And quite often what they don't have time to teach is, is the inspiration side. So I would say to people, the best way is to learn with someone, but that's increasingly hard, like I did at Pulbrook and Gould and with Michael Goulding. Um, I think if you go to a college or a school, um, you really must keep the rest of your brain ticking as well. And you really must find time to, to look at art. You really must make time to, to see things, go to gardens, get interested in gardens, 
try to grow something yourself so that you you know that you just you just get to know how it feels what does a lupin look like when it's growing lots of florists will only ever have seen a lupin cut yeah and you know you then learn that lupins do lovely loopy things when they're yeah, in the crazy and the bees they go crazy and it's really you know it's lovely to know that it's really nice to know the, the different behaviors and that's so that isn't really advice and also just to, to get out there and and see really good flowers you know get get inspiration from the best and find out what really which part of it appeals to you if you think it's a glamorous lifestyle you're in the wrong business go into i don't know could go into escorting or something <laughs> don't go into flowers <laughs> and really it's not glamorous so you have to be in it for the love of the flowers and the love of nature and that's what you have to really really understand um, and and get 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 to know really well i suppose that's, I that's not very practical advice anyway that's no, the advice I, can give. No, I think that's wholesome advice i like that i like that it's mm. all around i think it's all around and i think people who are going to um get into this business need to know that it's not glamorous and they need to know that it's not going to be flowers that yeah. are roses yeah. lysianthus jip just same again or whatever it's going to be yes. you know embrace it everything that's the way forward i, mean, I always say that if, if that's the only reason you're getting into flowers that would be like somebody who says i want to be a chef and working for McDonald's and doing a filet of fish every day for your life, doing a, uh, I don't even know what they've got, a Big Mac every day for the rest of your life. Just keeping that formula, that isn't being a chef. You know, that's, um, that's a different, it's just, it's just different. Yeah. So I really do think that we need to elevate the level of, of education for florists. We certainly need to work on the diversity of people coming into the flower trade. Um, and I think the past few weeks have emphasized that hugely, that, mm. that it is something that people either feel excluded from or they aren't encouraged to join. And I think, you know, that we as florists need to work on that a lot. Yeah, I think it's, it's a very interesting time. It's an interesting time. I think it absolutely sure. is a time. And I think it makes you, I think a lot of, um, I guess when I've been looking at the diversity, I've always thought in terms of my clients, do you know, yes. representing my clients, making sure yeah. everybody was represented, and um, and, and and yeah, it's it's massive for everyone. I think it's something that's so important. Yeah, diversity yeah. and everything really, and just it's being it's, it's so it's so important, and it's so important. It's so important, especially not that it's tokenism, but that it's actually letting people who could be brilliant florists, whatever their skin color, know that they have got a career and that their careers would be as uh, uh, I was going to say lucky. I think I'm very lucky. I was going to, okay. I was going to say as lucky as mine that they could that you know when I when I first started doing flowers there weren't very many Irish people and you know uh, not even comparably but Irish was considered a bit you know it wasn't the best thing yeah. and that's become trendy. That's what I would really want people to know that that there isn't a barrier that that you know any any level is is possible. But it does start at the bottom, like for all of us. We all started working in a kitchen with a, with a, with a car that didn't hold the flowers and water fell, spilled, everything. We all did all of that at the beginning. I think sometimes people forget that, that you, you, know, you didn't start off with a lovely studio and a great team and great clients. It, it starts much lower down than that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's true, isn't it? And it, people look at you and, they, and I think sometimes social media can portray that, that they want that success straight away. And you think, yeah. hang on a minute, like I, I've literally been yeah. doing this for a really long time and it's like, it's, yeah. it's taken so long and so much heartbreak to get, you know, where you are really. I, mean, I, I regular get, regularly get messages on Instagram and I'll say, well, it's all very well for you, but you don't realise how hard it is not to use foam, for example, because the water splashes. And I think, why would I not realize? What, what, what is it about me? Is it my dopey face or something that I wouldn't realize? You know, we have all done it. Yeah. We've all done it. We've all, we've all been in the wrong vehicle with the wrong containers and the wrong flowers yeah. and the wrong everything and wilting this and spilling that. And it still happens, you know, very interesting. Yeah, it's exciting. So what's your plan for the next few weeks? Well, I mean, there are no events. So there's no, there's not, there's not work to get back to for that. I've had the most incredibly busy months with the chance to actually work on British flowers and sustainability. So that's taken up 
a lot of time, as I say, not paid. Yeah. Uh, the next few weeks involve a lot of that as well. Um, we have an apartment we could try and like, you know, yeah. give me money. Yeah, there must be something environmental. Yeah. There must be an environmental minister somewhere that we could lobby. <laughs> Please, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'll sign that petition. <laughs> but I think that's the the what I see in the next months as well. Um, you know, I've been doing lots of online stuff. I've been doing, I have an online uh, course of sustainable floristry. I've got, yeah, there's a, so there's a lot of um, a lot of things happening that aren't quite what I normally do. Um, so that's interesting. Yeah, just get through it. Just get through different things. Yeah, there's no option, yeah. isn't there? No, 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 no option. Option. <laughs> exciting times. Um, will you... Um, um, so what I'll do is I'll link to um, your books and things and your online course on the YouTube as well, so people can find them. <laughs> find them on there. Yay! Um, how did the last book come about then, The Meaning of Flowers? How did that come about? So in about 2002, I think, I wrote a book called The Language of Flowers, which was very much about the language of flowers, the, the floriography of Victorian days. Um, and it went out of print probably about... 20, 2010, 2011. And I really, really was sad that it had gone out of print because I, I thought it's, it's, it's another thing that gives people a way to, to use flowers, you know, that they look at the meanings and they look at the symbolism. So I asked my editor if I could, uh, my publisher, if I could do another one. And we decided that we would make it much, much more contemporary and much more looking at why flowers had certain meanings, you know, why they had, uh, what were they associated with, were they associated with medical uses, things like that. And so that was the, that was the idea that it came about. It was my idea to do that one because I so liked the whole idea of flowers having been more meaningful, more thoughtful. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's what, that, that, that is, that is, you know, that anything that brings you back to being thoughtful about flowers makes you more considerate. Then you're you're going to be more thoughtful about sustainable things. Yeah, it's being mindful be as well, isn't it? Okay. It's being mindful, mm. it's being present, and it's really thinking about what you're actually doing. And I think that's absolutely yeah, anything yeah. that does that. Brilliant. Mm. Thank you. Yay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so yeah. much. Yay. It's a pleasure. It's Yay. lovely to speak with you. Yay. I'm I don't think we, we, we might not have spoken at Holly's class because there were so many people. Crying oh, into the yeah. handkerchiefs. Yeah, everyone <laughs> waiting. I've seen. I've since been to um, the flower farm twice now. Um, oh really? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. You have to go sometime if you get a chance. Ah, really? Yeah. yeah. It's just. It's, it's just in the middle of nowhere, and just that that vibe that Holly brings of just people together for flowers and just being. Yeah, it was great. She's got an extraordinary energy for flowers. Just extraordinary. Yeah, mm. that's it. But then we're all crazy in our own ways, aren't we? We all we're all from all the attractive. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yay! Um, yeah. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. I know that um, pleasure. like pleasure, precious time when we're all you know here. But no, no, no. I hope you can edit some of this out. It's gone on for a long time. But anyway, right, maybe you'll be able people, to want, people want to know. I think it's um, yeah, it's interesting where people have come from, and especially people they look up to, and people who've done like massive events as well. I think it's. Mm. Yeah. In yeah fact, we all I'm... come from the same kitchen table for sure. We all started off small. <laughs> I had some I had some clients yesterday I was talking to. Um it's funny doing like, you know, these appointments with clients on Zoom and things. Um and they, and I was saying, Oh, how about we put some plants in and maybe some trees in? And I was like, I'm speaking to the man tomorrow. He's really good with trees <laughs> in big uh, churches and building. <laughs> You've paved the way for many of us. Well, I, if it's made anyone think more about using more natural ingredients and growing things well then i'm delighted you know mm. that's that's wasn't the aim but it's wonderful if that's the effect yeah really. yeah absolutely and all the beautiful events that have you know have come from it it's awesome mm. yay well thank you amazing thank you very much indeed pleasure Bye.